Imagine with me that you just hired a personal assistant. They're so skilled and so talented and they're at your disposal 24 seven. They work with speed and efficiency. They don't get sick or tired. And the best part, they're free. Now stop imagining and open your internet browser. It sounds too good to be true, right? In the last 18 months, AI tools have significantly impacted the way we work and completely changed how we approach communication and productivity. Some have embraced it and streamlined their workflows, supercharging their productivity and the quality of their outputs. Some others who don't understand it have kind of banished it and categorized it as witchcraft. But I think this is a mistake. In this video, I want to show you how I'm leveraging ChatGPT, Perplexity and Prome AI to enhance my efficiency and perform boring tasks in a smart and productive way. I want you to remember this analogy of your new personal assistant throughout this video because I believe it will really help you to grasp how to use AI in the most effective way. Let's begin. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah, I'm an architect and sustainability specialist and on this channel we explore architecture principles and design strategies that help designers uh, create a more sustainable world. So if this is up your alley, make sure you subscribe. In this video, we're talking about the three AI tools that have helped me save a lot of time as an architect. I will be talking about how I'm using uh, ChatGPT, Perplexity and Prom AI uh, to streamline my workflow on how you can use these tools as well uh, to do the same. ChatGPT is the one that I probably use the most and I've used it for all sorts of things. Uh, I used it previously to help me write cover letters for job applications, uh, grant applications, which have both been successful, all sorts of reports like design and access statements, first drafts of emails, rephrasing paragraphs of meeting minutes, anything really that requires writing. Many of these tasks were done in a fraction of the time that it used to take me initially. And the output, uh, if the right methodology is followed, can be very sharp and professional. So, how can we use ChatGPT effectively? ChatGPT works with prompts, which is any form of text or information that will communicate to AI what response you're looking for. So, in other words, it's the instruction that you're giving your personal assistant. So, naturally, if you don't want them to give you something that is quite generic, um, your instruction slash your prompt needs to be very specific. To build a good prompt, uh, you need to consider these three things. Role, context and task. So let's break it down. Say you want to write an article on the impact of construction waste on the environment. Instead of typing what is the impact of construction waste on the environment, a good prompt would be first the role. You are a residential architect with 10 years of experience. Then the context. You are writing a LinkedIn article on the impact of construction waste on the environment to showcase to your clients how you are implementing best practice in your architectural practice. And then the task. Write a short LinkedIn article of three paragraphs. Now this is the core of the prompt, but to make it even better, uh, there are a couple of things that you can add which are considerations and writing style. Considerations could be, for example, uh, consider uh, current building trends. And the writing style could be uh, editorial versus academic, uh, simple versus technical, etc. So now that you've written an outline of your prompt and you've fed it into ChatGPT, it's important to remember that it only gives you a starting point. From there, what you can do is refine the prompt and try different iterations first. Then, ultimately, you will need to refine the output by using some good old-fashioned human intelligence. Perplexity is a search engine that generates answers to questions and references the source of that information. This is great because ChatGPT can't do that just yet. 
I use this quite a lot, especially if I am unsure about where to find specific information. Maybe some regulations are not very clear in the approved documents, or maybe I don't really know where to find the answer of a specific question. It's been great at giving quick answers and referencing from where the information came from so that I can check that myself. I've also used it to um, prepare presentations and do some research about specific topics and it's been a lifesaver. To give you an example, I was working on a floor plan of a residential refurbishment recently and as I was drawing the downstairs toilet door, I couldn't remember if it needed to open outwards rather than inwards. So I just asked perplexity. Again, you need to be extremely precise because unlike asking a coworker who might have a bit of background or knowledge of the project, perplexity has no idea what you're talking about. So the question that I ask is, uh, should a toilet door in an existing house refurbishment open inwards or outwards in the UK? And it gave me a really good summarized answer. So, for new bathrooms, building regulations typically require the bathroom door to open outwards to allow easy access in case of an emergency where someone collapses inside. This is the great part. It also is giving me the rationale of why this is the case. The rationale is that an outward opening door allows the door to be pushed open if someone is blocking it from inside. Okay, now that it gave me a bit of context, it's going to give me the answer uh, to my question. However, this requirement may be more flexible for bathroom renovations in existing homes as the regulations uh, seem to be focused more on new construction. It's also giving me the source of uh, the answer. Uh, in this case, I'm a little bit concerned because uh, the sources that it uses is uh, Mumsnet and Reddit. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not really convinced uh, by the sources that it's giving me. But because I know the answer to this question, I know that what it's giving me is right. And it was kind of like a reminder. Um, so I'm in this case, I'm not going to investigate further, but say, for example, I wasn't really convinced by the answer that it gave me, or, or I, I was a bit unsure, then I would do a deeper dive into its sources. And if I don't really trust the sources, if they're not official sources, then I'm going to um, change the prompt. Uh, and make it a bit more precise, make it refer um, to regulation. So basically guide perplexity uh, to give me an official answer. And then again, check the sources and make sure uh, that, it's, that the answer it's giving me is right. I've only been using Prom AI in the last couple of weeks, but I can tell it's ridiculous potential to save time. This image generator can take a simple sketch done either by hand or with a 3D modeling tool and transform it into a high quality image that can be used for presentations and so on. The way I've been using it is not to create a, a final output like a resolved project, but more to create a vibe or a style. But I think one way that it can save significant amounts of time is if you're working on a master plan and you need a first output that you can then take to Photoshop and tweak it uh, the way you want it to be. To give you an example of this, this is an image that I had produced during my master's studies and the whole project was meant to be done very quickly. Um, so um, I spent most of my time developing the concept and working on sustainable strategies. So there was very little time to create a nice looking image in the end. Basically, you can just take a screenshot from your 3D modeling software. I use SketchUp in this case. And then you can pick a style. Um, you can customize uh, the kind of scene, the output that you want. Is it an uh, outdoors image? Is it an interior image? Is it a commercial space? Um, and you can tweak uh, the parameters uh, to your preference. And then finally, you generate the image. You can also retouch it and replace elements inside Prom AI. Or if you have access to Photoshop, you can use generative AI in Photoshop uh, to work on your image even further, replace things that you don't want, add things that you want uh, and make it your own. 
I've tried it on a few images and I'm so impressed by the output. This was another interior sketch that the tool brought to life. I had to tweak the prompts and experiment with them to get the result that I really wanted, but honestly, it took a fraction of the time that it would have uh, traditionally taken to create that sort of image. I should also mention that the output of the image of the free version uh, doesn't come in very high resolution, but you can put it through a free upscaler like Pixel Cut uh, to increase the resolution. I'll leave a link to all of these in the description box. And let me know if you want to know more about Prom AI in the comments below. So remember that new amazing assistant that you hired? As brilliant as they are, they only follow instructions and they don't understand you as a boss. They're a robot. They are probabilistic in nature and they don't have beliefs or intentions. This means that you, as a user or as a boss, to continue the analogy, need to provide specific instructions and need to be able to review the output that your personal assistant is giving you. In other words, say as an architect, I want to write an advanced article about Einstein's theory of relativity. It's not something that I can just delegate to ChatGPT. My knowledge of the laws of physics or the speed of light is only limited. So I wouldn't be able to review whatever ChatGPT spits out. I simply don't know enough about the subject. On the other hand, what it can do is to help me write an article about a subject that I know well, or at least that I know the context of. For example, sustainable building technologies. It's still a complicated subject, but it's a subject that I'm familiar with, so I can guide ChatGPT or Perplexity to give me the right output. So before using AI, ask yourselves these three questions. Could you do the task at hand on your own? Do you know what the end result is supposed to look like? And finally, can you critically review the output? If the answer is yes, you can safely proceed. If you want to know more about other AI tools that I've been exploring lately, make sure you watch the video up here. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.